Last year, Indonesia's President Joko Widodo announced that he was lifting the foreign media ban in West Papua. Outside access to this remote Indonesian region had long been restricted amidst the simmering separatist conflict. A core grievance for West Papuans is that they were not fairly consulted about the incorporation of their homeland into Indonesia in the 1960s. It was the US, the Dutch and Indonesians who decided their future. We are Pacific, we are Melanesian, we are Pacific people. And for a long, long years, we are separated and uh, nobody here knows about what happened here. Some of us who had been previously knocked back for a permit to enter West Papua decided to apply again. A complex process led me in and out of the Indonesian embassy in Wellington, navigating a bureaucratic labyrinth. Indonesian state agencies are still coming to terms with President Widodo's move to ease restrictions. After a couple of months, my colleague Kuroi Hawkins and I were approved. We were going to Papua on journalist visas. We entered through the land border Indonesia shares with Papua New Guinea, a remote and unpredictable region. The Indonesian military, who we were not allowed to film, guard the border tightly. We're just going in. We're, we're at the border of Papua New Guinea and Indonesia. It's uh, um, a line down the middle of the uh, second biggest island in the world, New Guinea. It's the same land, but the differences between PNG and West Papua came sharply into focus as we crossed over to the western side, especially the presence of military and police, but also the prevalence of Asian culture. The provincial capital of Papua, Jayapura, is very much an Indonesian city. We found a people quickly becoming a minority in their own land. A state-assisted transmigration program which resettles Indonesians from other crowded parts of the republic in Papua has run for decades, leaving the indigenous Melanesians of Papua steadily outnumbered in their own land, marginalised from their resources and their culture overwhelmed. Every week there are four sheep who come to Papua, four big sheep. And one big ship can bring about 1,000 to 3,000 people. So if, if one week there, there are four, four big ships come to Papua, it means that in one week we have about four to 12,000 people who come to Papua. This is central Abapura, a sub-district of Jayapura city. It's the business hub of the Papua provincial capital. Yet a vast majority of the businesses here are operated by non-Papuans, that is, Javanese and other Indonesians. Young West Papuans are fighting to get a livelihood where access to basic services is ever slanted against the majority rural population of Papuans. When I graduate from university, I want to educate about the dangers of HIV AIDS to the people of Papua. I want to give them knowledge about the prevention of HIV AIDS because there are so many West Papuans infected with this virus. Spreading awareness of HIV in schools is necessary so that students can understand the problem which could be caused by this virus. Our duty as a health educator is to educate people, then they can understand about HIV AIDS and know about the dangers. If people understand this issue, they can take early precautions. <laughs> When I graduate from university, I would like to work as a teacher in a remote area. The place where I come from is in a remote area. There is no teacher there. Many Papuan children have no education, and youth have to go to another place for study. So if I could be a teacher, I really want to work in the remote area. But young West Papuans have grown up in a society where their right to freedom of expression, speech and movement is restricted. Indonesia's leading human rights body, Contrast, noted that in the past year it had filed 1,200 cases of human rights abuses in Papua. Philip Kama is a West Papuan who was given a 15-year jail term for raising the outlawed Papuan nationalist flag, the Morning Star. When we met him at Abepura prison, he was 11 years into the sentence and refused the government's recent offers of an early release if he admitted his guilt. He said he had committed no crime. The Indonesian government has embarked on a major development drive in Papua, including plans for an 800-kilometre Papuan highway and an ambitious railway project. 
It says that within the first two years of Joko Widodo's administration, eastern Indonesia's economic growth has surpassed that of the western part of the country. The problem of Papua is not only is not unique to Papua. We have poverty, uneducation, lack of competitiveness, lack of basic infrastructure all over Indonesia. So by taking Papua, we're making pilots that can be replicated all over Indonesia. And this will also bring the Papuans outside Papua, where they can become the ones to teach. Papua is a region of immense natural beauty and abundant resources, but Papuans have frequently complained that they've never really seen the benefits of the development of those resources. When government climb the land, and then they give for company to exploitation of uh, like a uh, logging company, and also mining company, and also uh, for transmigration area. And then Papua people angry about it. Because when they're talking about the land, it's like, land is like mother, can give everything for them. When they lose land, seems like we can easy to kill them because they're difficult to find the food, find the uh, clean water, find the uh, 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 food in the, in the forest. It is not big because of the West Papua, but it is because the attitude of colonialism, new colonialism and imperialism that they are still practices in this land. However, right up to senior figures of provincial government, West Papuans are fed up with staying silent and watching while their abundant resources are appropriated by others for the profit of others. Karena Papua menjadi perebutan semua orang. On one hand, Papua is very rich in natural resources, and on the other hand, everyone wants to come here and extract our natural resources without developing our people. If they don't have commitments to develop Papua, then there's no point in them being here. So Special Autonomy Plus is one of the ways to protect native Papuans so that they can enjoy all their rights on their own land. Some West Papuans, though, have decided that, despite the abuses and repression, Indonesian rule is a reality now. Papua has gone through its worst. We had uh, a lot of problems before. Since the day of integration, for at least more than three decades, we've gone through a governance system that paid uh, little uh, attention to Papuan rights to exist uh, as a people. But uh, even as citizens of Indonesia, we have a right to exist in our own land. Whether we are part of Indonesia uh, as a province, or as a, as a self-governing region, we have that right. It's clear the fabric of West Papuan society is changing. The steady rise of Islam into a previously Christian stronghold is creating an explosive mix. It was unusual, never happened before. Things have previously been all good between Muslims and Christians. It was miscommunication. There were thousands of students from all over Indonesia who came for an event organised by the church. The church asked Muslims not to hold prayer in the square, but in the mosque at this time. However, the Muslims held their prayer in the square. And when the church youth came to negotiate, they came without weapons, but security forces fired warning shots. Still, the majority of Papuans seem to yearn for independence, for the reassertion of Melanesian culture. I think because we have customary law here, working since a long time ago, I believe it would be good for us compared to the Indonesian law. Also thinking that we're Melanesian, we're not Asian, so we should take our culture back. We should fight for that. We should use our customary law to protect our people and our land. A new generation of West Papuans has emerged, less inclined to the fabled Papuan jungle warfare of yesteryear, more into non-violent civil resistance, embracing their indigenous culture and social empowerment. Local pro football team Persapura Jayapura 
are champions of the Indonesian National Football League. I'm not Indonesian. Persipura was last year invited to play a friendly match against Papua New Guinea to mark PNG's 40th anniversary of independence. However, they only got as far as the border, where Indonesian officials and military turned them back. There's still great sensitivity in Indonesia over anything to do with Papuan separatist ambition. But across the border, the governor of PNG's West Sepik province wants the barriers to come down to address an imbalance. I would like to see more Papuans coming to Vanimo, to Papua New Guinea, and given a proper or easy access. Jayapura is becoming now a vibrant city, rather than Vanimo and West Pacific province. So there is a trade imbalance. Deep cultural links exist between the two sides. In the border region, villages often have traditional border crossing rights, such as those in Lido on PNG's side. Mainly they uh, come across because they are in search of medicine or maybe uh, when they are running uh, short of uh, uh, supplies. Uh, supplies, I mean food, mainly food, not, uh, not uh, ammunition or arms or whatever. Uh, and, and sometimes they come across because uh, Indonesian authorities are after them. So they have to escape from uh, being caught. But it's not just political problems that spill over the border from West Papua. Aggressive deforestation and oil palm development are causing an ecological disaster on the western half of New Guinea. The island of New Guinea is the third largest uh, tropical rainforest on earth. The first is the Amazon, then the Congo, uh, and this is the, the third largest. Well, it's going very, very fast under logging. And, uh, you know, here the world is talking about climate change. They're really not doing anything about saving the, the, the forest on this island. Both sides of this island, I, I talk about this island, you know, because this is New Guinea, island of New Guinea. I see it as just one island, you know, it's not Papua, New Guinea and Indonesia or West Papua, no. This is one island that's supposed to be one island, meant to be one people anyway. So the, the situation here is if we don't do anything about taking joint action on both sides, we're going to lose this biodiversity. We're going to lose this because the logging is going faster than we, government, or the government can take uh, action or take responsibility for. Back in Jayapura, night falls quickly. Papua and customary leaders meet to discuss ongoing efforts to assert their basic human rights. One of my, our women leaders said, we don't want to give birth and giving our children to be killed. We want, give, we want to give birth and give our people, our children, for their development, for the good future of the Papua. And I think it is a statement of humanity. There are still significant restrictions in West Papua on reporting about security forces abuses, Indonesian military illegal businesses, agribusiness and mining. Media freedom is under fire and independent local journalists risk their lives. We got a lot of threats, uh, not uh, directly to myself but also for my journalists. And then, you know, one, one of my journalists was killed in Morocco. This is a complete land. Yeah? So everything could be happen here, even a killing, even harassment. So a shooting and then anything. I know there is, and we have a commitment to, to facing there is. Since the rise of social media, global attention on West Papua has been growing. Exiled Papuan activists and pro-independence figures like Benny Wender have campaigned far and wide to internationalise his people's plight. If I speak out, my ancestors will cry because they are still crying for help. 47 years, black people in the Pacific, especially in New Guinea Island, western half of New Guinea, they are still crying. 
if you think that is the best for us to maintain the special autonomy within Indonesia, why you fight for independence? You know, what is the difference between us and you? Since we met him, Philip Karma has been released, literally forced out of jail on the government's orders. Mr. Sonofare and also all uh, pastor in all uh, church in Solomon, uh, Guanajuato, Virgin, Papua New Guinea and all Melanesian country. However, he still refuses to admit guilt or stop calling for independence. The plight of West Papuan political prisoners has become of increasing concern to people around the Pacific, including some regional governments. Pacific leaders are now wrestling with the question of West Papuan representation in regional organisations such as the Melanesian Spearhead Group. The United Liberation Movement for West Papua has been lobbying across the wider Pacific region where it's gained strong grassroots support, if not that of all governments, for their self-determination aspirations. Civil society groups and a network of international parliamentarians want to take Papua's case to the UN and push for a referendum on self-determination. Jakarta says such a referendum will never happen, but unease lingers. Against recurring patterns of shootings, disappearances and security forces operations, Papua's climate of fear is pervasive. The Indonesian authorities watched us closely as we left the country and crossed back into PNG. In the intervening time, large demonstrations by West Papuans in support of the liberation movement have been held widely across Papua region. 2,000 West Papuans in Jayapura were arrested on one day alone, showing that the issue is still hugely sensitive to Indonesian authorities. It's my ideology, yeah. You know, I was born with my in a family who fighting for the freedom for long, long years. So this, I grow up with the ideology, but I choose another way. So. For me, everything can be burnt, yeah? but the ideology is still in my mind. So I believe about that. So maybe not, not me, maybe after uh, I'm not here anymore, my children will take care of the responsibility. So. Papuan civil resistance is becoming more effective, but the dominance of Indonesian culture there persists. Time may be running out for Papuans to effect a solution to their long simmering discontent with Indonesia. Papuan hopes are unextinguishable, but the window of opportunity for change is ever narrowing. <laughs>